Welcome to the GCN Tech Clinic, where we aim to answer your bike, tech, and maintenance-related questions. As ever, you can submit your questions down below in the comments section using the hashtag AskGCNTech, and we'll do our best to answer as many of them as possible within the allotted time. What is the allotted time? Nobody knows. Also, some of you have been posting some really useful comments and suggestions as well. So I'm going to read some of those out um, because I think it's great to share with people because there's some really great knowledge within our hive mind. Uh, so the first one is from Patty QA, QY8QH. Um, and this was about spacing disc brake rotors on wheels so that you don't have rotor rub when you switch between different wheel sets. So where the, the rotor um, locking section on the hub is, is different from different wheels, different wheels sometimes, only slightly, but enough to cause rub. And they said that uh, you can space them out uh, on center lock rotors using uh, DIN 988 shims in 35 by 45 millimeters. And they would recommend using the 0.1 millimeter thickness shims, and then you can stack them um, to what thickness you need. I think, yeah, great hack, um, great solution to that problem. Someone else also commented saying that another good solution to that is you know, you might not want to do this, but if you have wheels from the same brand, usually they are spaced the same. So if you're able to stay within one brand, that might make your life easier too. Uh, the next one is from Serge Melikayan, who says, in terms of drying out chains that have got wet, wax chains can get, um, can suffer from rust. It's, a, it's, it, it, they, it's a weakness of wax chains. It's one of the downsides in that if you're in a high moisture environment, waxing isn't always the best because they don't have that thin film of uh, protective grease over the chain. Um, so they're suggesting that you can put your, to dry your chain out, you could put it in a Ziploc plastic bag like you would have for a freezer bag in your kitchen. And you could put in little gel packets like you get with lots of little items that you buy like shoes and stuff to dry them out. And um, that'll help remove moisture. I think it's a great hack. I also think that you could use rice as well, uh, as rice is a really good desiccant. It's very good at removing water from the air. So if you've got some rice lying around, knock yourself out. Uh, next question is from Sankt Johansson, who says, is there a difference between using the large chain ring and the uh, small front chain ring on the turbo trainer when you're in erg mode? If so, what's the difference? According to the display, the cadence and power are both the same, but it definitely feels different. Thanks guys and gals, Merry Christmas. Right, there's a couple of things that could be feeling different here. Firstly, um, there's gonna be a very slight difference in drivetrain efficiency, depending on what gear you're in and what the chain angle is, and that's gonna be slightly different depending on whether you're in the big and the small ring. The big ring is generally more efficient. So when you are in erg mode, always try and be in the most efficient gear combo. So with the, the chain line straightest um, and the chain in the going through the least tight gaps uh, so the bigger chain rings more efficient and then a, and then probably middle of the block at the back so that the chain isn't bent um, the other thing is that when you are in the bigger ring getting that gear going in erg mode or if you get a bit bogged down and slow down there's higher torque because it's it's effectively like a bigger lever so there's less torque higher speed in a smaller chain ring so Although erg mode will counteract that and uh, sort of cancel it out by adjusting the resistance in the smart trainer that you're riding on in, in the trainer, getting that initial torque going is going to feel different whether you're in the small ring or the big ring. So that too. But overall, I'm not a fan of erg mode. Some people are, but on the whole, I prefer to train without it. I prefer to actually ride my bike in a more realistic way as I feel that this is more specific to road riding and you don't ride in erg mode in real life. Um, especially if you're doing a time trial or anything, you have to get used to just having that slight fluctuation in, in your power. So yeah, I would, um, that would be my advice. Anyway, uh, next question is from MuratGook5245 who says, hi, Alex, Ollie, and Manon, and Sai, just in case. Uh, does a wax chain last longer when you ride indoors, or should it be re-waxed as frequently as the one I use outdoors? I don't sweat much while riding indoors, um, and do all my hard rides outdoors, if that makes any difference, love the channel. Right, a um, few things to unpick here. Uh, yeah, if you're sweating on your chain, it's probably gonna drop salt on it, you'll need to clean it a bit, and um, it might wash the wax off a little bit, um, but, I suspect that's not a big problem for many people. Um, 
The other thing is that in terms of rewaxing your chain, don't don't set a date in your calendar. It's more a case of when it needs it. So and and like we always say, the best way to to know when it needs rewaxing is you'll hear it. It'll be quiet when it's nice and, and, and lubricated. But once it starts to wear away on the on the lubricant, the wax, it, it starts to just get noisier and noisier. And that's a, a sign that you should rewax it. In theory, it should last longer indoors because there's far less contaminants, unless your house is really dirty, uh, coming on the chain as you ride. And so, yeah, you should get more life out of it. And the other thing to factor in is that what you mean by a wax chain. So an immersive hot melt wax chain should last longer, in my experience, than one that's just been drip waxed. So I've had over a thousand kilometers out of a single hot, hot melt wax treatment um, when it's been ridden in, in good conditions compared to, yeah, a, a drip on one which, you know, uh, that if you ride a drip on one and then go ride in horrific wet conditions, it can be one ride that you'd need to do something to that chain. Um, but typically I, I get maybe a third to half as much life out, out of out of a, a drip on wax chain. So yeah, um, that's, that's the advice there. Uh, Thomas Quinn 2831 says, I'm going to be riding Land's End to John O'Groats in the summer, the length of the UK. That's an epic ride. Remember Hank um, did that with Mark Beaumont on a tandem. Uh, it's a great video if you not seen it and he wants to use comfier tires my current ones are 25 millimeter is there anything wrong with using 28 millimeters front and 32 millimeters rear and should i get a wider wheel set to accommodate this well the key thing is actually whether or not the tires will fit in your bike so you need to assess that and check that out and when you're working that out there are calculators online you can use that'll tell you how your tires are going to blow up on the rims that you currently have so the critical dimension you need to know is the internal rim width of your wheel, um, and that will affect the amount of volume that then the tire, uh, when it's inflated, creates. So yeah, double check that. And I would just say go for the widest tires possible. If you can fit 32s front and rear, you won't regret it. Recently did a video on why comfortable is faster, and on a massive endurance ride like that, trust me, you're going to enjoy being that little bit more comfort and, and having that bit more padding and cushioning as you're riding along, especially in the UK where, well, the, the roads are, are pretty crap, um, unfortunately. So, yeah, there you go. Uh, next is NZ Surly Rider. I'm guessing you're a Surly Rider from New Zealand. Um, they say, we spend a lot of time talking about the advantages of wax chains when compared to oil chains. Yeah, we do. Yeah, sorry about that. Um, but you guys have lots of questions, so we want to answer them. Uh, what about belt versus waxed? Is there a power difference? And if so, does it come down to the chain versus belt system or the different mech that you get on a belt drive? Um, so even like a, a wet lubed chain is typically more efficient than a, a belt. Um, chains are just more efficient than belts, so irrespective of whether it's been waxed and optimized or not. Um, belts have a number of advantages. They are less susceptible to dirt and they're less susceptible to wear. So they're great for commuting and utility bikes and um, leisure riding. But when it comes to performance cycling, um, yeah, belts are not the best option because they're less efficient and so forth, they're, they're slower. Um, belt systems are typically, well, the commercially available belt systems are typically a bit heavier as well. And the other disadvantage is gearing options. So you can get a much bigger range of gears with chain systems. You know, when you're going for typical road cassettes and typical road chain sets, you've, you've got a bigger range there is you don't have the cassette on, um, yes, I've like usually like hub gears and stuff on belt systems. So yeah, there, there's less options there as well. So hopefully that answers your question. Um, next question is from Cameron Fraser, ACHF, who says, I've been paying attention and I've lowered my tire pressures accordingly along the lines of size recent video. But what about on the trainer? The trainer tire is a 23C, um, so it's quite a bit smaller than what I run outdoors, and clearly we aren't worried about pinch flats, but should I be following the max shown on the tire or some lower pressure with a wheel on trainer? Well, the key thing with a wheel on trainer is you don't want that wheel slippage. Um, so when you sometimes get out the saddle or you're doing a high torque effort and you're trying to get going, sometimes you can do that the wheel spin and it slips against the trainer, you don't, it doesn't grip. At that point, I would say, 
you want to be using a bit of trial and error. If your wheel is slipping, maybe your pressure is too high and you want a bit of lower pressure as that will create more grip on the wheel on trainer. Um, in terms of what rolling resistance, you've, you've got a very small uh, drum that you're riding, a very smooth drum that you're riding against. Rolling resistance is, is not as uh, a sort of critical thing as it is on the road in, in that regard, um, as you're not w having to get over all those imperfections on a road surface and you're not wanting the tyre to deform over those in the same way. I would say, um, like a higher pressure, as you would on a velodrome, you'd run a higher pressure. It's a very smooth surface. and But I would say up to the point where your wheel isn't slipping. So yeah, that's, um, that's, the, that's the advice. Right, unfortunately, that's all the time we have this week. Sorry if I've not got around to answering your question, but be persistent, keep them coming in the comment section below, and I'll do my best to get around to it in a subsequent episode of The Tech Clinic. Right, I'm going to go now. Love you, bye, oh, and happy Christmas. Bye.